All right, good morning, everybody. We are in the final 10 countdown. Get ready for lesson 111, multiplying decimal numbers by 10, 100, or 1,000. So just a quick little review, what we know so far about multiplying decimal numbers, we don't line up at the decimal point. We multiply exactly the same as multiplying whole numbers, count the total decimal numbers in the problem, and we move the decimal point in the answer that many places to the left, right? So let's take a look at what else we should know. That method we just described of multiplying decimal numbers will work every time. But if you're multiplying by a multiple of 10, either 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, whatever, there is a shortcut you can take. And this is only going to work when multiplying by multiples of 10. Start with the number that's not a multiple of 10. In this case, it's 1 in 366 thousandths. Count the total number of zeros in the multiple of 10. Like if it was 10, that would have one zero. Or if you're multiplying by 100, that would have two zeros. Move the decimal point in that number that many places to the right. So I'd start off with 1 and 366 thousandths. I'm multiplying it by 10, which only has one zero. So I just want to take my decimal point and move it over one place to the right. That would give me a grand total of 13 and 66 hundredths. Because when you multiply by a whole number, the product gets larger, right? So the trickiest part about this is, do I move my decimal point to the left or do I move it to the right? So remember, the old regular way, we move to the left in the answer. If I was taking 1 and 23 hundredths and multiplying it by 10, I'd start off with 1,230. Then I'd count my total number of decimal points, which would be two, and move it over two places in the answer. This way works every time. And then the final step, I would just have to go and erase any of my jump lines. And now that I look at it, I really don't need that zero at the end. So I ended up with 12 and 3 tenths. But let's check this out in the shortcut version. In the shortcut version, I'm just going to go and count how many zeros I have, move my decimal point over one place to the right, and I ended up with exactly the same answer, right? But again, it only works when multiplying by a multiple of 10. So let's go and try a few of these. So here I have 1 and 234 thousandths, and I want to multiply it by 100. It's just ones and zeros. So let's go and count the total number of zeros. I have two. So let's take the shortcut, because when we multiply by a whole number, the product gets larger. And I'm going to move my decimal point to the right now. And I end up with 123 and 4 tenths. Let's try this one. Here I have 345 thousandths, and I want to multiply it by 10, just ones and zeros, so I can count my number of zeros, which would be 1. Move my decimal point over in the problem one place, and I would end up with 3 and 45 hundredths. This zero would end up being in the tens place now, so I don't want to keep them written down. We wouldn't say zero, three, and 45 hundreds, right? Check out this one. Five and 67 hundreds multiplied by a thousand. This one might be just a little bit trickier. I want to move my decimal point over 
three places and I move it over one, two, oh, oh, I don't have any other numbers. I just have a whole lot of nothing. What number means the same as nothing? That is the digit zero. So now I can jump it over one more place and I end up with 5,670. Don't have to write the decimal point in the end, right? Let's try one more kind of like that. Here I'm taking 100 and I'm trying to multiply it by 4 and 4 tenths. So don't get confused if your multiple of 10 is up on top. The concept works the same. Count your number of zeros. Two. When you multiply by a whole number, the product is going to get larger. So let's just go and move the decimal point over two places. Uh-oh. I have a whole lot of nothing again. So let's write in one more zero. Bring it over one more place for the two. And that gives us a final answer of 440. So that, my friends, is the end. Not too tough of a concept, but remember, the regular way you count the total digits behind a decimal point and you move the decimal point to the left in the answer. The shortcut that only works with multiples of 10, count the number of zeros you're multiplying by, move it over in the factor that many places. You might want to scratch a piece of paper for the Socrative quiz just to keep track of all your jumps, and good luck. That's all, folks.